Well, today's show, it's all about confidence. It's about leadership. It's about customer experiences. It's click funnels. It's our famous goal tip and your question of the week to our panel of experts. Stay tuned for a great half hour show right now on Business Today. What a show. We're talking about opportunities, click funnels, leadership, and probably something that is uh, really opportune at the moment, confidence, considering what's going on with the coronavirus. With everything going on, uh, there's a big hype. You've got social media, there's fear. And if you don't have confidence in making decisions in your business, nothing will happen. And this is, I think this is where also where you there's a divide now between successful and unsuccessful people because successful people are going to look for opportunities now and have the confidence to act on it. Look, if you've got any questions for us, just put them in the comments. We do see them pop up. We we tend not to answer why we got the show going because we've got too many other buttons to (laughs) to press. But hey, like, subscribe. Don't forget to give us your comments. Share it with other friends. We're going to kick the show off with Hilia Singh. Now, she's a self-made millionaire, and right now she's going to talk to us about confidence. question that I usually get asked by many people is this, what's your number one tip for finding confidence to do business your way? Well, as a woman, it's not easy to you know, play in this game of business because uh, typically business world is driven and ruled by men and of course men, the way that they rule and the way they think, the way that their goal setting is set up is completely different to a woman. But for me, uh, it's just to know what I want and stick with it and follow my passion. Don't ever compare myself to someone else. That was my biggest, uh, basically, adventure there. Uh, As a woman, we always try to uh, get validation from others. No matter how successful we become, we try to get validation from either our parents, our uh, partner, our children even, and even from our male colleagues because we just want to make sure we are doing the right thing or uh, you know, we are not threatening someone else's you know, game because we are playing away in a high level. So, but by not worrying about others, to me, just that care itself showed to me that, okay, I don't have to prove myself to anyone. All I have to do is just follow what I believe and every time I feel demotivated, one of the things that I do and maybe that's a good exercise for everyone is just look at what you do. If you've got uh, competitions or somebody that you just think that you are not as good as them and that really makes you feel bad about yourself, stop following them. You don't have to see what others are doing. Just uh, look at what you're doing and just, just try to compete with the person in the mirror every day. Well, there was Hilia, and I said, I thought that was fascinating, the conversation we had with her about confidence, and I love her comment at the end about it's all about the person in the mirror. You as the business owner, it's all about you. You need to have the confidence to make decisions, and unfortunately now, you make decisions that will affect everybody in your business. Yes, and you know, we've got the coronavirus going on, and people are getting a little bit stuck now. They're going, oh, well, people aren't coming to the shops, so or they don't want to come to events. You know, we've got wedding planners at the moment going, what's happening to my business? And we caught up with Andrew Ford, and I think this is really opportunistic right now, because he talks about customer experience and the importance and how he's built his in Ford and doing air conditioning. Your, your customer experience is everything because people will talk about it afterwards. And especially now, you, because things are going not your way, yeah. you will need to look for opportunities, have the confidence like what Helia said, yes. but then also now to give the customer the best experience ever. Well, here we are again with Andrew Ford, Ford and Doonan, air conditioning fame. And my, one thing I really wanted to talk to you about today was you built your reputation on customer experience. And I think there's a few business owners just think they can just do the sale and then that's about it. But you went a little bit deeper. Yeah, I don't think anyone can just do what the, um, just do the sale anymore. I think, <laughs> I think the summary of this is we've got to exceed the customer's expectations. 
which is getting harder and harder with the consumer getting more and more demanding with um, you know, online and speed. Mm. They want everything straight away. So it is getting harder to meet their expectations, much, much less exceed them. But that's the key to customer service is doing something that they're not expecting, mm. apart from the obvious. So the obvious yes. being, you know, we've always been big on uniforms, so they know straight away who they're dealing with. Yep. All our staff have name tags on so they can address them by their first name. Straight away, that builds a different level of rapport. Mm. And of course, it goes without saying that you've got to be polite, well-mannered, <laughs> and get the, get the client to like you. That's the secret. I, it reminds me of a story um, where I think Kyle went out doing some courts. They ended up having dinner with the clients That's because right. he got to know them so well. Yeah, it was meant to be a half hour or 15 minute pick up some drawings. And if you've been there an hour and a half later and invited to stay for dinner. So if you get that, obviously you've built great rapport if they're offering you to stay for dinner. I know. One thing that I found with Ford and Doonan, you when this is a certain thing that I think um, business owners can learn a lot from when it comes to customer experience, is that when your customers have a problem, your attitude, let's fix it first, and then we can work it out later, and you don't argue about right or wrong in this. To a degree, obviously there's extremes yeah. of that, but the standard type situation, yes, we solve it, and we take a more strategic viewpoint, as in we wanna um, win the, the war, not just every battle. So in other words, you've got to lose some ah. to reach the ultimate goal. So where a lot of people are very you know, um, stubborn for the want of a word, that mm. nope, that I'm right, they're wrong, <laughs> I'm, I'm not letting them get away with this, you know, and that's fine each to their own, but inevitably I don't think that leads to a brilliant customer experience and your mm. reputation can get a bit tainted by that too. Well, there we are, customer experience with Andrew Ford, Ford and Doonan. I mean, they've been going for 35 years, Ford and Doonan, so they do know what they're doing. I think that's really important to, to find people when you're getting something expensive as air conditioning, because re yep. reverse cycle, high quality, you need the right people. But also because of the experience clients had, they keep on deferring, and yes. that's what you need in your business. He gets repeat business, doesn't yep. he? One thing I've got to say as we go in, the coronavirus is hitting everybody. You know, plans having to change. Suddenly people aren't showing up at your shop. They're not showing up at events. We know we mentioned the wedding plans. I'm sure there's a lot of other people. If you're having struggles now, put them below because we do have experts in our panels that can maybe give you suggestions to help you get through this. But uh, you're having a chat to John Brooms. And he talks about hit by a bus. But I think coronavirus may be being hit by a bus. Uh, and, and you talk about backup plans. And now it's the, that opportunity for you to see what backup plans do you have in place. Um, it might even hit you three or four months later, but now get that backup plan in place today. Yeah, so here he is, Mr. John Brooms, and he talks about backup plans and what you can do if you're hit by a bus, but, or in this case, coronavirus. So you're the owner. Here we are in the business, everything's running, things are going okay for you and tragedy happens, you get hit by a bus. Some of the questions that are gonna come up in this situation that you need to think about, you need to have a bit of a plan in your head, something that's a backup, and that is what am I gonna do if I do get hit by that bus? Three important questions to ask. And the first question is, if I was hit by a bus, who would go in and open up the business tomorrow? Oh, I'm not sure, it could be a family member, it could be the general manager, it could be just the same fellow that opened and closed the doors for the last 10 years. But you need to know who it is that's going to be responsible opening up the doors. The second question is a bit of a challenge to the first question, and it's just a slight change of wording. And the question that you need to ask yourself is, who should go in and open up the business if you were hit by that bus? Because in a lot of cases, it seems to be that the person that should open the business is not the person who would open the business. So you've got a bit of a dilemma. You've got to think about this a little bit. Identify who the people are that are working with you and really feel comfortable that the person who would open the business is the person that should open the business. And the third question is really the big one. What happens if they aren't the same person? If the person who would open the business isn't the person that should open the business, then you've got to think about it to the point and identify the right person. It's critical that the right person opens the business. That person might be the face of the business to your customers. It might be the person that connects with your suppliers. 
but it's a critical person and a critical position that needs to be satisfied. So think about who is that person that will open the business if you got hit by a bus tomorrow? Oh, gee. <laughs> sometimes, if you see us, sometimes we're glancing at it, making sure the buttons are pressed and going live. Uh, look, keep the questions coming, keep your comments coming. If you want any help with anything, let us know. We're here for you. Look, one thing that we are finding is people a little bit don't know how to market their business and so forth. But hey, if you need some help, drop us a line. We're more than happy to help you. Video production is exactly what we do. Content is king. If you need a bit of help with yeah. that, we'll do that. Talk about cameras and turning them on, Gerard. And <laughs> you had some fun during the week. Well, we, we had an idea last week and we thought when, when our guest speakers come to, the, to come and visit us is to ask him a question. We don't let him know what we're going to ask him and they only got 60 seconds to answer. So the question this week was, what is your definition of success? I used to think success was making money, growing businesses um, and uh, having uh, having this picture of being a tall poppy. Uh, I, I've since mellowed, my wife has brought me down to earth and I really see success now as relationships, the people that I work with, the people that I share time with, making sure that I can contribute value to them uh, and to grow our relationship, to have value uh, between us. My definition of success is knowing that what I've done yesterday so I can actually top it up, I can do better. So, and I'm not stuck in one thing that everybody just defined that, okay, success means having this much money or doing this or having this size. Um, but me, success is a journey. And if every day I'm moving towards that, it doesn't matter how slow, that is my definition of success itself. Okay, so my definition of success might differ a little bit to other people's definition of success because I want to be successful for myself. Okay, so if I can get to kick my own goals, and it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks is successful as far as their goals go, mine are fairly simple. I have achievable goals that I want to be able to get to some points in my life to make my life more comfortable. I don't need to be the richest person on the planet. I don't need to be a multi-billionaire. But hell, if I can make you know, a million or two, I'll be happy as. Oh, for me, it's freedom and fun. It's basically just two words. Just to really um, be allowed to do things that I love to do and uh, have enough time for people I love and family. That's most important. Okay, well, success means different things to every individual. Right? It generally means achieving your goals in life. I would say that um, I would have, would have achieved something with my life if I've contributed to um, humanity in some way during the time I'm here. What fun you had. And you can see that these people were totally unprepared. Yeah. I found it really interesting, the commonalities between these millionaires, what their answers were, Gerard. Uh, if, you, if you're successful, uh, you, your idea of success change. And uh, yeah. every time you go to the next level, I think it, it changes again. So what is your idea of success? Yeah. And look, there are things, and people talk about coronavirus and everything, but not just coronavirus, things do come up, circumstances change, you know, problems occur. And we went out, caught up with Peter McLernan and said, problems have occurred, Peter, but is there opportunity? And we had a really good discussion about this, didn't we, with him? Opportunity, again, I think the more initiative you use, the more you are in the habit of innovating your business every day, the more you will see opportunities come up. <laughs> Morning, Michael. Good morning, Peter. Uh, How are you? Morning. You're looking well? Uh, yes, no dreading lurgies in my neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> virus hasn't caught up with you yet, eh? No, no, I've avoided the virus. So That's good. Uh, the That's media good. virus I'm avoiding as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But it's yeah. really interesting though, Peter. I mean, obviously mm. this virus is, the coronavirus obviously we're talking about, mm. is having some impacts on businesses, mm. but it's also creating opportunities as, as well. Mm. And mm. I thought you'd be a great person to mm. speak to on this mm. because you're actually in business, dealing with businesses, yeah, yeah, yeah. and how this is probably a time you don't pull your head in, but you can actually take some advantages here. Yeah. Well, um, the, the effects on our business so far haven't been uh, dramatic. As you say, we're dealing with um, other businesses all the time, not with individuals. Mm. 
Um, so a uh, lot, lot of businesses uh, have got reserves, and particularly larger businesses we deal with, you know, they'll, they'll just get on with business basically with some interruption. So our customer base probably going to carry on through, through this um, with some changes, you know. Um, I expect we're going to have a, um, the biggest effect on us will be a close down if and when it comes, which I expect if it's going to come will be within the next couple of weeks and probably last a couple of weeks. Right. So um, what we've done to, um, so you might say, to react to the current situation, um, not, not a lot, but we've, um, for example, we've stopped trading on Saturdays. Um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, foot traffic's died down a little bit anyway, so it really became you know, less worthwhile as a customer service to open on Saturdays. We'll reopen again probably in a month or two once um, things have settled down a bit, you know. Yeah. So that's one reaction. Um, the other thing we're doing is watching the um, incentives that um, are put out by the state and federal governments to assist um, small business. Mm. And I think the most worthy of those is actually the federal government's um, proposals, you know. So from our point of view, um, one of the biggest ones is the $150,000 um, tax uh, uh, asset investment tax deduction that's offered by the federal government. So anybody investing up to $150,000 um, into business equipment plant, which is what we sell, office mm. furniture, shelving, racking, shop fittings and so on, um, all of the things we sell are tax deductible for businesses. Um, that'll create a great incentive for businesses that do have the capital and do have the reserves to purchase before 30th of June. So there's, a, there's two parts this, I suppose, then. The, the smaller businesses you're saying now can be having a look at not only how they can take advantage of this capital investment to get the tax write-offs, mm. but if you're in business and selling to business, mm. this is perhaps an area you can start to focus on and yeah. then how you can deliver those products and services mm. in, in the meantime so that people benefit all around. Yeah, well, we've shifted some of our sales, some more of our sales to online. Um, that's because um, we're offering free delivery online to clients that purchase over $300 worth of uh, stock yeah. or equipment. Um, that's to make it less necessary for people to come into the store, you know. So if they shop online, we'll deliver it free. So you've looked at an issue now that's crazed a problem mm. and then found a solution that would be attractive to your customers. Mm. Yeah. And, and I suppose that's good for businesses to look at. They look at what, what you're doing here at Business Space mm. and, and go, that's, that's quite interesting how you've shifted mm. and then not only just shifted at where you sell, but give an incentive to try and assist people as well, mm -hmm. which obviously builds your brand and builds your reputation and yeah. keeps your cash flow going. Yeah, that's right. And I'm also looking there at the possibility of that um, close down, which means that we can continue to take orders and uh, make sales online through that period. So we'll have someone operating at home, you know, taking uh, orders and um, you know, making sure that deliveries are made as soon as this um, shutdown period mm -hmm. finishes, you know, yeah. which we hope would be sometime in mid-April or, you know, to enable the May and June months, which are the prime months for businesses investing in the types of things that we sell, ho hoping that by that time, you know, things will be back to relative nor normal, you know, normality. Yeah. Yeah. So if I was a business owner now, I'm probably going to be looking at, maybe I should catch up with my web developer, get my online store yeah. up to speed, yeah. offer some incentives. Yeah. And, and start looking at that customer service like you guys are mm. doing at Business Space mm. in how to deliver the customer service online. So those that mm. have that concern, yep. you're, you're alleviating it and taking advantage of these government yep. write-offs as well. Well, see, a lot, of the, a lot of these businesses will still be thinking about how they're going to spend that incentive you know, in May and June, <laughs> you know, during that period that they're at home. Yeah. Know. So, um, you know, making plans, maybe looking at a, a fit out or refreshing the office or whatever, you know. Um, you know, that they're able to uh, work through those plans, contact us, we can give them information, they can come to a conclusion and place an order during that period of time for delivery uh, in May and June, you know. So um, the other thing we do is we do EDM, so we send out emails to our um, customer base, our client base on a, regular, on a regular basis. And at the moment we're sending out information about that free delivery online and mm. also We'll start to send out more information about the government incentives in relation to tax deductions for uh, investments in assets. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that was great catching up with Peter McLernan and showing you as circumstances change around, how you need to be adaptable. The opportunities, I think, is spotting them opportunities is how you can get in front of that curve. But if, even if you go back to Helia earlier to say you need to have the confidence yes. to then act on that opportunity as well. Yeah, I think when you have a look at the likes of Helia Singh, you know, Andrew Forge, or Peter McLennan, yep. the John Bruins, they're all bringing to the table, as you said, confidence. I think that's really yep. well is is kind of gelling all this together on this show, especially exactly. with the circumstances that is going on. Yeah. But uh, all of these people are so positive. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, we went out, and who did we catch up with next, Gerard? With Alex. With Alex, and she said a really important thing right now is leadership. We need leadership, especially when there's a disaster, there's epidemic. We need good leaders. Uh, we don't only see it in business, but also in, in governments, mm. how they deal with this. Yeah. Well, here we are again with Alex from The Mentoring Effect. How are you, Alex? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. <laughs> oh, it's really interesting because before we came to camera, you said you would like to talk about leadership. So that was really important, especially what's going on around the world yeah. today. Uh, so what does leadership actually mean to yourself when you go into companies? Uh, yeah, look, it's very important from the beginning of your business. That means from the time that you're setting up the business, you already should think as a leader. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm always kind of having in my mind like a four different steps of structure that I'm using. Okay. It's kind of like an alignment model. That means you're sure everything is going well in your company. Yeah. Um, Come on, <laughs> I, I want to get right into this. Okay. <laughs> There's yeah, four look, steps. Yeah, okay. Look, first thing I, I would say or I would su suggest uh, every leader should be aware of uh, their environment. That means you're talking about the business as itself. That means setting up your goals, vision, mission. And now because you're a leader, you should think about your team if they actually are aware of the vision and mission of the company. And if they're not, you need to implement that and you need to train them just to be sure they are actually aligned and they know about that. That means it's kind of that attitude and everything in a culture. You, just talking about that, do you find that like over time, sometimes if you don't, you, you do repeat this, do you find over time it kind of drifts out of the cult? People forget what it's about and like they're just too busy doing the business? Yes, of course, yeah, it's that everybody says, you know, that's not important, our vision, <laughs> mission, our vision, everybody has that, you know, and usually you put it on the wall. But I think it's yeah. kind of more, you're driving that, for example, if your, your vision is excellence in some kind of customer services, you're driving all trainings, and all uh, structure through the same things. That means you have kind of benchmark, benchmarks and mm. you're setting up the benchmark that are very important and people, if people are aware of them, they know what to do and that's what you implement into structure. And basically you have processes and, uh, and procedures in the company and mm. uh, you know, people know how to answer the clients or customers or what to do, you know, step by step. I know it, it sounds overwhelming and too much, you know, biocrats if you want to <laughs> avoid that. <laughs> But one thing I do like about that, it, what you're talking about is almost empowering the people in the company to make better decisions because they know what their decisions should align with. Yes, exactly. That's why you're setting up the values. For example, in um, uh, one corporate, we have values as a teamwork. There was value uh, thriving change. That means you, you mm. were aware that it's going to be change that can some, something bad happen, you know, like in hotels and on uh, cruise yes. ships or if you have tourists you know, on board yeah. and it's always something crazy and you can't change the nature, you can't change the weather. And mm. yeah, sometimes really bad things happen and you need to react. That means you, yeah, you just need to really thrive in that change and, and just, just do it, you know, and you need to allow so your people. So what's step number two? That's step number one. Yeah, that was basically structure. That means you, you put everything into systems and you have clear processes and, um, and people know what they're doing. That's important. Mm. And the implementation is basically how like, you're going to train them. You're going to explain. That means it's, it's coming from the hiring session, I would say. That means mm. you actually tell people first, like, okay, this is the company you should expect that we have these kind of values and you're also choosing people based on values not skills that I think we talked about that before yes, we did. and yeah. people are the most important that's in my structure people are most important uh, part as the fourth step that is most important in the company when you're doing structure and I'm conscious of time but when you're doing structure do you incorporate the staff as well to help document that structure, get their input? How do you approach that? Yes, uh, the, the great thing is uh, when, when some, because everybody has different skills. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty bad with 
um, writing <laughs> this, writing. Oh, yeah, this writing the systems. Yeah. <laughs> that means I always have someone who is really great, first of all in English, the second of all, you know, in law and, and really talking in a beautiful way, not yes. like me. <laughs> that means it's kind of good to have someone who is helping you to mm. put things together. And also the team is it should be part of that as well. Yeah. That means if you're choosing to have using Google Drive or cloud yeah. right now, you know, everybody should be aware of that and have training in that. Yeah, that yeah. collaboration. And what is step number three then? You, you said there was four of these things. Yeah, no, there was the impl implementation. We just kind oh, of ran right. through. Yeah, yeah, that means it's, uh, for example, we had uh, Google, Google Drive from beginning. We were mm. using that in the company. Even if we didn't have a lot of people at the beginning, but basically from the first day, we had system numbering, mm how to actually put together the files and everything. Yeah. And after that, you're just bringing as a four step to, to all these two people and you basically introduce them, what you're doing, how you're doing that. Yeah. And you try to teach them fun way, how we do oh, it. Fun <laughs> way. When you wrap up leadership, and I know we're short for time, we're, uh, you're very busy. Um, but if you're wrapping it up and someone said, look, I want to try and get some better leadership in my company. What would be your piece of advice to business owners looking on today? Uh, it will be, first of all, don't panic, just really calm down, sit down and think about what you want to achieve. That basically starting from the end point, mm -hmm. uh, what is your goal, what is your mission and after that, how you want to do it, who you need to be and really ask yourself, yourself questions. I think that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, the mentoring effect, it's been fantastic having you on the show again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, there we go, a leadership with Alex, uh, and she runs her business, The Mentoring Effect, really mentoring and team leadership building with people there. Now, coronavirus is, is tending to stop people going out and about, Gerard. I think it's the, this fear. Mm. Uh, we listen to social media, where yeah. we, I think, most of our, our, our information comes from social media. Yes. Uh, and that's why I think the next topic is so important again, is uh, about talking about Facebook. Yeah, and how we can, if people aren't coming to us, how we can use Facebook to go to them. Exactly. And that's why, because Facebook changed the algorithm so much, <sighs> it's important to speak to somebody that's an expert to tell you how to get your message out. Yes. And this week, what uh, Ivor said he wanted to talk about was click funnels. In other words, bringing the business to you, even though the people may not physically be coming to you, how we can use click funnels yep. to actually bring the business to you and using Facebook as the entry point for them. I found this very, very interesting. But again, we use the social media Facebook to do that. And what Peter said, now we go online and we do sales online. So everything is opportunity in what we do. Hi everybody, welcome back. The last couple of episodes we talked about the importance of different elements within your business Facebook page. Now if you haven't seen them before, go back over the episodes, make sure you do the actions and follow the tips. Now look, just one thing came across to me the other day was people have reached out because they've actually realized that my main focus of my business is funnels, specifically click funnels. Now I do sales funnels, membership funnels, product or services, it doesn't matter. The typical, I say to people, is if you've got a product or service to sell or promote, you're talking to the right person. Funnels can be used in any business. It doesn't matter what you are, where you are in the world, drive leads for charity events, ticket sales, you throw some comments across, I know I can build you a funnel. Now, this email came to me on, please explain basically the power of funnels and how you can use it within this person's business. Now this guy's a professional business offering professional services in Perth and he didn't realize that the power funds could be used in his business. Now he is a broker. The thing is, with, he was looking at it from an, the wrong perspective. He was looking at it to showcase his services, but what he wasn't doing was putting out in the marketplace a video with a point of the funnel to collect their email information on how he can help them. He was sending people to a typical website and so on that explains what they do, but people know what a broker does. If I say to you, what does an accountant do or what does a lawyer do, you're going to know. But the point of a funnel is that funnels have a one purpose, is to help you understand more how that particular business can help you achieve your goals. You'll have a social proof video on the top. You will have a collection email below where people give you their contact information and the funnel may or may not take you to the next step. Product funnels, for example, the next step would be, would you like an additional product? Would you like another product that complements 
the person on the logical journey of why they come into the stage one of the funnels, such as if you came in and bought, purchased some supplements, you might want uh, a weight loss guide, then you might want a, a, a newsletter to come through every month and giving you recipes. So back to the broker, the, what we'd done with him was his initial funnel page one was about who he is and what he is. The second page of the funnel was a social proof on who he works with within the marketplace, such as uh, Stratton and uh, Allianz Finance and that type of thing. So that was giving people a bit of trust on who they're dealing with is reputable within the marketplace. Now, the third step of his particular funnel, after they collected the email addresses and after he'd given them social proof was, would you like to come and talk about investment properties? Now that might seem like a bit of a diversification away from the point of the phone, but his avenue is that he can get you finance, he knows the deals, he knows the brokers. So once he gets you initially to sit down with him, he understands your financial position, where you're at, what you want to do. The majority of the people that are seeking finance within his realm are trying to do asset finance or property finance. So he knows that the majority of those people will be interested in probably adding to their product or their property portfolio in the future. So he has went through, and that's what I went back over a few episodes on selective avatar. He knows his avatar are, are people of investment. They want to invest, they want to grow. So that is the point of his funnel. Other funnels that we have done and other questions we have answered is a simple one page testimonial which is called a bridge page which takes the person, puts a bit more trust behind their brand, takes them across to an existing shopping cart or an existing website to sign up. It's a simple one pager. It just gives your avatar that extra bit of trust in who you are and who you've worked with and you are local and you're not in a different country trying to offer a service that you can't deliver on. That is the power of a funnel versus a website. So I've been, I get asked questions all the time, and I literally let people have their epiphany moment on how a funnel can work for them. So you're probably watching this thinking, well, my business doesn't suit it. I would just ask you to write down on a piece of paper, who are your avatar, how can you communicate with them better? And I guarantee you will come up with an epiphany moment going, oh yeah, we could, we could make a quick video on showing them our store. We could do a quick walkthrough to say if you come to our, uh, her salon, if you come to our beauty salon, if you come to our establishment, this is who we are, this is our staff, come meet our staff. That is bridging the page between will they work with you or not, or will they come and see your business or not. You're just pushing the trust even further to say we are friendly, we are local, come with us. Back to the broker, what worked really well for him was he was able to explain to people their pain points of he does the legwork for you in his video. He doesn't want you to go off and shop around with 10 different industries trying to figure out the best deal. What he wants you to do is come to him, let him do the work for you, and then he will present deals that will match what you're seeking. That is his job. Without that testimonial video in the middle, there's no way of explaining that on a website because the video is in the funnel is called distractive marketing. When you're scrolling through your phone, you want to stop for a second and listen to this video or watch the text, and then it takes you on a journey to follow up, to connect with that person. <laughs> well, there's Ivor and ClickFunnels. We were smiling because we're going, how do we use that strategy for us? How can you use it for us? And look, if you want to share some of your strategies and ideas, put them in the comments. You know, let's ask us some questions, let's share some ideas. Let's be a community that helps each other, especially in these particular circumstances and times we're going through. And what you listen to today is this, see if you get at least one thing that you can take mm. and implement in your business that will innovate and make it better. Yeah, and look, we are going to replay the show on Sunday, but it is permanently up on our YouTube channel. So you can go to Worthington Stoop, you can go to One Minute Millionaire, you can go to 101 Media Group TV there on YouTube. So it's in several places as well. But I thought the show today, what did you get out of it? I thought the confidence section yeah. was really important considering the times. And for me, it was looking for opportunity. Yes, that opportunity one was really good. And you know what? It was, it was when we talked to uh, Andrew Ford and he talked about making sure that customer experience is correct right now. I, I would go back and actually look through that and make some notes for yourself because I'm sure you're going to find some gems in there that'll 
help you not just survive but thrive in these current circumstances. This is an ideal opportunity to do an audit on your business and all the systems. I love that. Do an audit on your business. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. Hope you've really enjoyed the show. We love being with you again live. So keep those messages. We do like them. We do respond to everybody uh, when the tapes are running. Talking about tapes, I think we've reached about the end of the show, but we do have our golf tip. So we'll go out with Mr. Peter Hopkins. <laughs> I almost called him Peter McLean. That's, <laughs> that's what you get for being alive. Peter Hopkins out there at Wellback Golf Course is going to tell you how you can select the driver that's right for you so you hit it straight down the middle. We'll see you next week. Welcome to this week's tip brought to you by Top Tracer, your personal golf coach. This week we're going to look at how do we decide which driver to use, which one's going to go further, which one's going to go longer. We can use Top Tracer as our personal club fitter, helping you hit it straight down the middle. This week's tip brought to you by Top Tracer, your personal golf coach. This week we're going to look at using Top Tracer as our club fitting guide. <clears throat> the most important part that we're looking for is how far we hit our driver. By using the information that we're going to get from Top Tracer, it tells us how far the ball goes and also what speed the ball's going off at. And we'll be able to try one or two clubs against each other and see what the difference is on that. Okay, so the first driver we're trying out today is Rickson with a stiff shaft in it. And then I'm going to compare that to another Srixen but with a regular shaft in it. Second hit, let's see how we go. Okay, so let's try the other club now and see what difference we get. So if you're not happy with your current driver, come down to Whaleback, grab a couple of drivers, come out on the top tracer range and hit some shots and you'll soon see which driver suits your swing the best so that you can hit it straight down the middle. <laughs>